How's it going? Good. Uh, on time yesterday, only only a half hour late today, ah, which is yeah. not, not bad. Less than I was. <laughs> I'm on the fight's getting close. I'm getting focused now. I want to fight. So I've given, I feel I've, I was early yesterday. I've been uh, handling the duties that they've put before me. <clears throat> so give me a little bit of slack, please. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to praise you. It was less Thank than I would Thank you. Get. Good man. Thank you. <laughs> Talk about yesterday, man, the press conference. I think it took a lot of people by surprise, right? The energy that was in there was obviously your first time back in front of the big crowd. There's no can throwing. There's no yelling at anybody. What, what did you make of yesterday and the, the energy there? I have to say I enjoyed it. I mean, it was good. There was competitive spirit there and a good energy in the crowd. And, you know, we're gearing up for a, for a fight. Um, I just react, like I said yesterday, I react how the situation is. And the situation has, has been good. So it's been respectful. A welcome change, right? So happy days. I was going to say, a welcome change. I wonder, do you find this more pleasurable? I mean, I think in the past, man, you've had the weight of the world on your shoulders as you're, you know, creating these rivalries and, and, and making these intense battles that everybody wants to tune in for. Is this, is this better? Oh, there's still pressure here, right? There's still, there's still weight on the shoulders. So um, I enjoy it. I enjoy these moments. This is, what I, this is what I love to do, right? So it's good to be back. Um, it, it's a different re uh, response between myself and Donald, but... It's still a high intense bout and make no mistake I'm coming with all my intent and all my all my skills to put Donald away. And Dana has said that there's some stakes here. It's basically a number one contender bout for you at lightweight if you choose. Um, I'm, I'm curious. I know you say you maybe that fight doesn't even happen. It's falling apart so many times. But let's say the fight does happen. We all get to see it. Do you have a preference of you know getting a rematch with Habib versus if you were to take the lightweight title from Tony Ferguson? I think regardless of of the result, I think I should possibly I should probably face both of these men. I would like to face both of these men. I'd like to face Tony Ferguson. I've had a history with Tony, right? We he was man we we managed Tony. He was well looked after. We had him one of the highest paid non champions in the game, and you know there's this history with Tony, so. I'd like a bout with Tony at some stage. Of, of course, the rematch. We must, we must make that rematch. I'm pushing for the Moscow bout. I'd love to do that. Um, both men are certainly in, in the crosshairs. Yeah. And last thing for me, Connor, I mean, you got to take care of business first on Saturday, but you're a guy that gets to call the shots sometimes. We, we had Kamaru Usman here earlier, and he said, listen, if, if Connor wants it, I'm interested. We also had Masvidal here, and he mm. said he, his eyes kind of lit up a little bit. I think he's down. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He said he might even I'd say so. Up. I'd say so. You know, this, uh, let's be real. It's the McGregor multi-million dollar fight club, right? Donald's next up. This will be a multi-million dollar payday for Donald. Gone from a couple of hundred thousand. I mean, t talk about the records and the amount of times this man's made that walk and he's, he's never hit the seven-figure mark. Now he's going to hit the multi-seven-figure mark. So I'm very happy with that and very proud of that and proud of the position I'm in. So you best believe they're all, they're, all their eyes are lighting up when the notorious his name is mentioned. Uh, like I said, this 170 bout, uh, I made this bout at 170 <coughs> for the excitement that's going on in the 170-pound division and, and my, my, my want to get in there with, with, with this situation for the bad motherfucker belt or, or the, the actual the world championship belt. So both of those men are also on my radar. If you had to pick one of those three, if Dana came to you with the option and said, look, lightweight title fight, welterweight title fight, Mazidoff for the BMF title, which, which one would you prefer? Hmm, you know, whichever one comes up first, to be honest. I just want activity, right? I'm going to go in, I'm going to look to acquire rounds in here. I'm not going to be in a rush. I'm going to put pressure on Donald. I'm going to hurt Donald, but if he can last, I'll be happy. I'll be happy to acquire rounds in here and then build on these rounds. I feel after the Diaz 2 build up that I had and then the performance I had and the, the bout itself and then leading into the, to the Eddie Alvarez uh, fight, I just felt like I was in prime condition and untouchable. And so I'm looking to acquire that. that uh, that 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 time in there again. So, and um, whichever one comes up first, like I said, God God willing, I get out uh, on, or get out safe the, on Saturday night. Whoever's uh, up next, I know a date was mentioned in March. I'm up, I'm up for March also. You're gonna see a lot of me. You know, you're gonna see a lot of me here. So happy days for you all. Also, I know all your eyes are lighting up too. <laughs> Connor to your left. Um, are you surprised this fight with Cowboy hasn't happened before because it has come close? Yeah, you know, yeah, it has come close. Nate Diaz obviously stepped in that time, and there's been it's been rumored since 2015, right? So it's been inevitable that the bout would happen, and um, 
I, I feel timing, the timing has been right, you know? We've gone, our, we've gone our ways and we've come back around and things have changed and it's, like I said yesterday, it would be probably, be, probably be, have been a different build-up many years ago if the fight was made compared to how it is now, so I feel the timing is right. I feel it's good, good for myself, good for Donald, good for the sport and good for the progression of it. And I'm happy also it's at 170, you know what I mean? Like I said, Donald didn't think I was going to be Jose at 145, Th thought I was too small at 155, now I'm at 170. People say, I'm, you know, maybe I am playing a little psychological game with Donald, a little internal one or a subliminal one. You mentioned the timing of this fight not happening before. What about the timing now is happening that, that this is, was able to happen? Well, look, it was so, so long. Where, sorry, where was that question coming from? To your left, sir. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it's, it's so much politics in the game, right? I, I've been looking to come back. I was supposed to come back last uh, July. Um, for against Gagey at 155, that was what we were scheduling for um, in Madison Square Garden. So many things got in the way. Then I was asking for someone else, and then it's just it's just so much noise. So I went to Russia. We had a date. I said the date. I told the UFC this is the date I'm coming back. Get me an opponent. I said before the press, ask the UFC who the opponent is. So they chose Donald, and, and I'm very happy with it. Like I said, it's been inevitable. I'm I'm very happy with it. So and I, I know you're asking me who's next, what's next, and uh, uh, for me, it's me next. I'm just coming back in, fresh, ready, prepared, looking to compete. So who it is, it does not matter. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a big fight no matter what. There's many there's many big fights uh, uh, before me. So. Last question for me. Does Donald's persona strike you as different from other fighters? Um, some unique characters in this business, right? I mean, you, you want to you wanna see unique characters, you look inside the, the UFC and, or the mixed martial arts as a whole. So no, Donald's, Donald's a good... Sorry? Not many cowboys. Not many cowboys now. So it's going to be good to do battle with a cowboy. I got to say, the notorious versus the cowboy. I've been loving all the, the artwork and stuff that the fans have been doing. Um, very exciting. Very excited to get in there and do the business. Connor, you mentioned the pressure you feel in there. Right here, Connor. Left. You mentioned you feel pressure in there still. You still feel a weight on your shoulders, and yet you're also saying you're back, you want to fight a lot. With the success you've had, with the money you've had, where do you find the motivation to keep doing this at that level and this often? Yeah, no, I want to feel that, right? So the, the, the guy said no, I didn't have it, right? So I've kind of taken it off, but I want that feeling. You know, you got to have that feeling to get in there, and it's a pressure, it's a pressure game, so um, I'm very happy with the situation and very, very, very well prepared, so excited to get in there. Was there something missing in your life during your periods of inactivity over the last three years? Did you feel differently than when you have a fight coming up? Mm, consistency and stru structure was missing, right? Structure. So I was not, I was sporadic with my work and with my life. So um, I'm a lot more centered now, a lot more grounded and a lot more focused. Hey, Connor, right, right in front of you to your left. Can you just give us an idea of, of what the fame has been like? I mean, I think you've experienced something that, that a lot of us can't even wrap our heads around, mm -hmm. that you came, no one knew who you were, and now, you know, the last four years, you've been one of the most famous people on the planet. What has that been like? You know, I always said, fuck the fame, right? I never got in it for the fame. It's just been a necessary part of it, and it certainly has its pros and cons, and I think one day maybe I'll just, I'll just log off and do a back step out, out, out of it all because it is a wild, uh, it's a wild game and sometimes, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's tough, but um, I'm very grateful for the position I am, I am in. I'm very grateful for the support I have of, of, the, of the people. You know, if it brings in some, some bad, I just think if I keep my po focus right and my positivity sharp and keep the, clo the people, to keep the people that um, I respect around me, that, that, will, that, will, that will overcome all of that. So that's where I'm at with that now. What is the bad? Can you give me an example of, of just something that, that is a negative about it? Uh, there you go. I know, you know, I want to keep the positive. This, look, look, you, you know what? You know what the bad is. You know what the bad comes with this life, you know? It's sometimes it feels like a witch hunt at times, you know what I mean? And sometimes it can, it's not so much me. I'm, I'm cool with it for being me. I, under, I understand it. It's the people, it's my family and things like that. It gets a little bit heavy at times. But I understand that it's a necessary evil. And I also understand people have real problems. This is not a real problem. I rolled up in a blade and Rolls Royce truck. My family's back home. My son is playing in the, in the pool in our Vegas home. People have real problems. So I'm very, very blessed. And... Um, although it comes with its, its downsides, the upsides outweigh that, and I'm very, very, uh, very proud and grateful of that. The Instagram post that you put up um, that said, whoever shoots first is a cow bitch, 
Can you uh, can you explain what, what what prompted that? What was going through your head? Yeah, just just having a little bit of fun with it, right? You know, I know Donald's saying, oh, I'm not going to shoot, and we'll see what will happen on the night. So just playing games with it. It's going to be a good bout, and I'm excited. When I hear you talk about uh, about boxing and winning a world title, and, and you got some boxing coaches in your corner for this fight, could, do, you, do you envision, could there be a point in time where you're actually more active in boxing than you are in mixed martial arts? <sighs> hmm. Oh, it'll be hard to leave the MMA game fully, you know. Um, I think that's a great aspiration to have, you know, to achieve that world world boxing title. What what a what a feather in the cap that would be to to be a dual weight, multiple time dual weight mixed martial arts world champion, and then to to acquire a boxing world title. So that's something, you know. I always look to aspire bigger and reach higher and um, aim for the stars. And like I said, with activity, with consistency, and with structure, I can do anything. Like I have done already. So. And last question for me, uh, on the Countdown Show, Kavanaugh said that when your student um, accomplishes everything he wants to accomplish, that's the worst day, because then how are you going to motivate? And he said that you found it that you just want to be the best version of yourself. And I understand what John's saying there, but you've also, you've also o always struck me as somebody who needs concrete goals. You know, you need things to, specific yeah. things to aspire yeah. to. Is that true, or is it just yeah, no, being the, th the best that version is, of yourself? I, yeah, no, that is, but that's, that's, he's very correct. I want to be the best version of myself, and everyone's saying they want the old Connor, the 2016 Connor, and, or the Connor that fought Eddie, and I, I feel I'm in a better place than that. I'm, I'm better skill set than that. I'm more experienced. Um, so that's certainly a drive of mine to be a better version of myself. And then I use the goals and I have the aspirations to, to help me achieve that and help me to push the boundaries. Because without, without a set goal, you know, it would be very hard to, to really push through, through the limits that you need to push to get to, get to this level. So um, we've had a phenomenal camp, this, this, this camp. Like it has really been, I take my hat off to my entire team. Um, we put in some, some amazing work and we are only at the start of it. Connor, over here to your left, uh, you mentioned wanting to box, but how soon do you want to get into a boxing ring? Is that the next time we're going to see you fight? Is it going to be boxing, or is it going to be UFC again? You know, it's hard to, it's hard to say. Like I said, consistency is what I'm here. I'm going to keep going. So whatever's, whatever pops up, whoever, the guy asked me which of the three in, in a mixed martial arts battle I would like forced, whatever, whichever one comes up forced, I'll, I'll be ready, so... Well, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao are not getting any younger. Do you mm. think that fight is going to take mm. place this year? Mm. I certainly would love the rematch with Floyd. Um, it could it could very well happen this year, yes. It could very well happen. I know the Manny one is there whenever, so. Manny Pacquiao's right-hand man, Sean Gibbons, he released the poster yesterday on social media, a fight poster of you and Manny Pacquiao at Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. Is that an event that you would want to be a part of? Yeah, well, that, that's the new football stadium, is it? Yes. I would be honored to, to, to be a part of that event. When is that uh, stadium being built? I want, It'll be open over the summer. Wow, I would love to be the first, uh, the first combatant to, to, to fight in that arena. Um, what a fight that would be against Manny, right? A small, powerful southpaw. I'd have to figure out the weight and these type of things. Um, but something that interests me, no doubt. But you would be interested in boxing someone outside of Floyd and Manny? Yes, 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 yes. Even if it's an unheralded contender? Yes, I think so. I think, you know, I, I've gone right to the top, right? I thought I'd done well. I did do well, right? I won rounds. I hit him more times than anyone. I hit him more times than Manny hit him. And I think with small adjustments in the prep and an understanding of what, the, what that style he's coming at me with now, I think I'd beat him. I, think I'd, I, think I, I really do think I'd beat him. So, um but again, that was at the very, very top. So there's many world champions and many people around that also have somewhat of a name. And I feel like I could fight anyone. I could compete in, against anyone. People just people want to see me compete, and I, and I want to compete for the people. So. And in, in addition to being a competitor, you're a businessman as well too. And I know with Zufa Boxing, that's something that's around the around the corner. Uh, what kind of conversations are you having, and what role you want to be playing a part of that? Well, we have actually had no conversations about Zufa boxing per se, but you know, I've done amazing work with the UFC, I've done amazing work with Zufa, and I've done amazing work with Dana. So, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure the conversations will take place at some stage. You know, I think we're all just kind of feeling it out and waiting to see what happens. And like I said, Manny's there, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's people there, and there's, there's things happening in the background, so we'll see what happens. Connor, right over here to your left. To your left right here. Uh, you said you've been waking up earlier in this fight camp than usual. Usually you're, you sleep in late. What does a Conor McGregor morning routine look like? 
<laughs> yeah, um, you know, yeah, so for me, I, I done this on the Diaz 2 camp, right? I structure, I had a set time that I'd, that I train uh, each day and I had a set time that I went to bed and I had a set time that I woke up and I, I, I replicated that again. I'm just going to make that my, my, you know what, it, it happened actually naturally to be honest with the kids. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't stay, I couldn't stay up late and stay in bed. The kids would be running around jumping on top of me then, do you know what I mean? So it just happened naturally and then I just regimented it a bit more. I said, okay, I'm going to make it a specific time. So it just walked in sync with it and I wake up in the morning, stretch, always drink water, um, go down, have my breakfast, play with the kids and about an hour and a half to two hours post breakfast, I put in my first uh, training session. So that's my morning routine and I absolutely love it dearly. We got a new property in Ireland. It's a phenomenal property on beautiful grounds, the Irish, the Irish air, the Irish, the trees and the forestry in it. It's like a park in the in, in the house. I'm very. I wake up every day, and I'm very very blessed to have to be to be, to be giving my kids this life and to be have it, living this life myself. So, morning for me now is just a time of appreciation and just I just I'm just appreciative of of what I have in my life. Thank you very much. It's great to have you back. Thank you. Thank you.